to chapter 6. Please, I've got to talk to my mother, Steve DeBay said for the third time. I've got to get her to mellow out my stepfather, or there's going to be one hell of a punching match when I get home. In a little while, Officer Charles Averino told him. Both Averino and his partner, Barney Morrison, knew that Steve DeBay would not be going home tonight, and maybe not for many nights to come. The boy did not seem to realise just how heavy this particular bust was, and Davarino would not be surprised when he learned, later on, that DeBay had left school at age 16. At that time, he'd still been in Water Street Junior High. His IQ was a 68, according to the Walchester he had taken during one of his three trips through 7th seven, through grade. Tell us what happened when you saw Mellon coming out of the Falcon, Morrison invited. No man, I better not. Well, why not? Averino asked. I already talked too much, maybe. You came in to talk, Averino said. Isn't that right? Well, yeah. But, listen, Morrison said, sitting down next to the bay and shooting him a cigarette. You think me and Chick here like fags? I don't know. Do we look like we like fags? No, but... We're your friends, Steve-o, Morrison said solemnly. And believe me, you and Chris and Webby need all the friends you can get just about now. Because tomorrow, every bleeding heart in this town is going to be screaming for your guys' blood. Steve the Bay looked dimly alarmed. Averino, who could almost read this airbag's buzzy little mind, suspected he was thinking about his stepfather again. And although Averino had no liking for Derry's small gay community, like every other cop on the force, he would enjoy seeing the Falcon shut up forever. He would have been delighted to drive DeBay home himself. He would, in fact, have been delighted to hold DeBay's arms while DeBay's stepfather beat the creep to oatmeal. Averino did not like gays, but this did not mean he believed they should be tortured and murdered. Mellon had been savaged. When they brought him up from under the canal bridge, his eyes had been opened, bulging with terror and this guy here had absolutely no idea what he had helped to do. We didn't mean to hurt him, Steve repeated. This was his fallback position when he became even slightly confused. That's why you want to get out front with us, Averino said earnestly. Get the true facts of the matter out in front, and this maybe won't amount to a piss hole in the snow. Isn't that right, Barney? As rain, Morrison agreed. One more time, what do you say? Averino coaxed. Well, Steve said, then slowly began to talk.